guys, Dark Recycling FPV. We are now doing part three of our um, ARC F140 uh, fighter, uh, the Fighter 140 frame build with the HDLRC component. Sorry, I'm sitting here trying to unscrew these while we're talking. So let me show you where I'm at right now. And I'm gonna do a um, do a split screen here. Let me see if I can do that. Okay, there we go. So this is the frame that we're working on right now, right? You see it? Okay, and so this is the F140. And the part that we finished just now is putting the ESC on. And right where we're, the next part is gonna be putting the motors on, measuring the wires, heat shrinking the wires, and soldering them to the ESC. That'll be step uh, step three now, right, for video three. So we're gonna be using the 1407 3600 KV uh, flames from HGLRC. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fasten one. And because the distance, if I can show you this, um, one of the things you want to make note of is if you're flying a frame like this one, right, you want to verify, for example, that, like rough estimate, that from the, uh, the point on the frame to the uh, center of the arm, I don't care what point it is, you can use the faster here, uh, that you, you're equal on all. So let's say, say it's around 65 millimeters. So if I come over here, uh, it's around 65 millimeters, and here uh, it's about the same, 60, so they're all equal. And what that tells us is when we measure one motor and wire set, it's gonna be identical for the remaining, right? So we don't have to worry about measuring all of them. We're gonna measure one and cut all the rest the same. So we're gonna use this one for now. And what we're gonna do is we're, gonna, we're going to use the screws that came with this and find the ones that are of the right length. You wanna see about two millimeters uh, extended beyond the uh, carbon fiber. That's gonna get a pretty good hold on the motor. And so um, anything longer than that, you can get away with it, but you may find yourself uh, you know, touching the copper underneath. So I'm gonna go with the shorter screws, like these ones right here, and set these through. And I'll use that to hold the motor in place. But what you wanna remember is not to tighten them, don't fully tighten the motor, because you have to adjust it and get the holes lined up, right? So let me do that, there we go. And I'll just take another one, line it up here. And you can always inspect visually and just look and see that if you see the screw coming, protruding through the metal, uh, faster here and then actually getting near the copper the screws too long you need to change it okay all right this is fine though so now what we want to do is we want to lay this out and see uh, how we're going to make this work so what you do is you just take your finger hold the wire down and have it trace the route that you're going to actually put this on put this on now we know that there's a, fa a, a a standoff going right here in this circle so this wire the the ability for it to get through is going to be impeded somewhat by this and so what we're going to plan is you can either come in and go behind it, or you can plan on coming in between the uh, standoff there and the camera mount. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plan on going like this, all right? So if I do that, I know that my wires are gonna need to turn in, and they're gonna be about that long. So let's see where we're at. If I was to pull this straight, and I take a measurement, I'm just gonna cut it. Now, you know, I'm pretty sure that I'm in the right spot, but yeah, it looks, I think so. It looks like it'll be, down here, turn, and then turn. So I think we're gonna be just fine here, all right? So let's see where we're at. All right, we want them, we're gonna to try to get them as close to equal length as possible. All right, so measuring now, pick your, pick your point of measurement. I usually pick to the, uh, the, um, the mounting area or the housing, the bell housing. So I'm gonna say 65, I mean, it's, it's a little short of 65, but I think it's fair to say 65 millimeters. You may have a little bit of extra there, but if you go with 65 and you use this little trick that I use, um, find yourself a um, find yourself a piece of uh, heat shrink, right? And I think these are going to actually be too short to do this with. Yeah, let me find something a little bit longer. I have some already saved, but I'm just in my mess. Here they are. Let me see if I have a 65. So here's what I've done. I have pre-labeled a lot of my heat shrink. Let me show you. Okay. So here I have an 85, I have a couple 85s, I have a 68, a 70, an 80, uh, that's a blue stick, 40, see if I got anything else. I was hoping I had a 65, but maybe not. Uh, actually, that's a 65 right there, okay? So that's 65. What that does is that allows me, by doing that, right, that allows me to take this and put it on the rest of the motor. So here's an example, so that we can make sure everything is uniform, because that is the most critical part of the entire build, is making sure you keep things uniform, okay? Uh, you know, it's it, to me it is. I have to have everything uniform. So here we go. So what you do now is, now that you know it's 65, take your 65 millimeter heat shrink, slide it over all three motor wires, just like that, all right, and cut the wire. There you go. Now, I know that this is gonna be a little longer than this one because that was like 63, but if you were to compare, there's only gonna be about a two millimeter difference and that's very close right there, as you can see. That's the wire from the first motor, which is sitting right here. 
And here, I'll put these on the table so it's easier to look at. Okay, so there you go. They're almost identical, very close, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. And now we've got one motor done there. We're gonna do another motor here. And by doing this, you can almost prep the entire motor and do everything before you put it on the, the quad so you can prep ahead of time. So let me just show you how that's gonna work. All right, so we're gonna get our screws and we're gonna set them aside. We've got all these baggies and stuff. And there's definitely a never ending supply of baggies here. Let me do that. Okay, so here's the next motor. We're gonna take our 65 millimeter heat shrink, slide it over the wires, just like that. Make sure they're all flat and cut the wires off. There we go. So that one and that one are identical. And then we have one more motor right here. So we got our screws in over here. And we get rid of the baggies, the boxes. And we're gonna put this over like this. Just little tricks to keep things clean, okay? That's, that's basically what happens. All right, so let's do that. And there we go. So now our motors are all ready, right? So now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna see how long our heat shrink run is gonna be, okay? So if I was to guess, I would say that probably my goal is gonna to be to put a zip tie or I could use tape, but I'll probably for this one just use a zip tie. Uh, put a zip tie right here, so right before this joint right here, and put a zip tie right over here where the heat shrink from the factory is, okay? So that being said, I'm gonna span the gap of this arm. So if I'm gonna say that my heat shrink is gonna be from this joint here where they join to about, uh, about 35 millimeters, right? Between 30 to 35 millimeters, to about right there, okay? Which should be right about here. So let's see what we have to use for that. Now, if we look at a standard heat shrink size, it's gonna be about 45. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut 10 millimeters. I'm gonna cut this down to 35 millimeters, okay? Just like that. Actually, I think I wanna use a different color, but you know what, for right now, I'll just use this and we'll call it a day. Uh, one, two, three, and I need one more. Four, all right. So we're gonna cut the rest of these to match. One. Two. And again, you can get this heat shrink on our website too. Right near where I showed you where you get the screws, right around there is also heat shrink. And this is actually really good heat shrink. It shrinks really well. Uh, it's a little thinner than normal ones. And so it's got, I, I would say, I thought it was gonna be two to one, but it almost looks more than two to one. Uh, also, try to save these. I wouldn't throw these out because you'll end up using them for something else, and I'll probably show you one of those techniques shortly. Uh, so there we go. So we've got four heat shrink ready to go. And before we mount the motors, and I'm going to unscrew this motor now, we can go ahead and tin the motors, apply the heat shrink, and just get ready for mounting. And then the motor section of this is going to be done. All right. Let's get all the screws together. There we go. Okay. So first thing we want to do is we want to tin, I'm going to set everything aside, we want to tin the motors, right? And I'm going to take my 65 millimeter measurement there, put that aside, put these aside, and then get rid of these wires that we don't need. And one of the good things about this HDLRC stuff is it comes in these plastic bins. So by all means, store your stuff in there that you're done with. And this way you can keep it without having everything all over the place. There you go, put that stuff away. All right, so, Let's get ready. Um, we are going to tin these. So to tin them, what I want you to do is I want you to try to focus on leaving about two millimeters, millimeter and a half to two millimeters exposed. So if you had to guess what that is, let me show you. Uh, you're talking about uh, that much wire there. So I would, a, I would remove about three millimeters of uh, the silicone sheath, uh, sheath around the wire because you're gonna have to twist this anyway once you put the um, solder, the flux on there. So, and then you can just cut away the excess, but you need to get kind of a little bit of wire so you can at least twist the strands so they don't come loose. And you'll twist them after you put the, um, the uh, flux on there. So let me show you how that's gonna work. So let me just get these pieces off. And as you do this, you'll find your comfort area of how to strip these wires and be somewhat consistent. But you don't wanna leave them that long when you're soldering them. That's too long for a, a, an ESC of this uh, physical size. So you wanna cut them back, right? All right, so here it goes. Okay, so there it is. So we've got four motors now. 
Again, get the trash out if you have to, like me. I gotta use the tweezers to pick this stuff up. So one, two, there we go. Okay, good. All right, now I need the flux paste here. Here we are. And uh, like with everything else, everything you see me use here, you can find on our website, flux paste, solder machine, solder, screws, heat shrink. Uh, there's nothing I have here that we don't offer, except I don't have the rulers. Um, screwdriver, screws, everything. I got to get the rulers. That's one thing I got to get. All right, so let me go ahead and just kind of mix this up here. I want to make it a little bit more pasty here. There we go. And then I'll just clean that off with a paper towel. Give me one second. Let me go get that. I don't have a paper towel, so I'll use an alcohol wipe. Okay, save that here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the first motor, dip it in that little goop area there, take that, and just twist them up real good. Make sure to press that flux paste in there, and then just twist it up. That's it. Okay. And I would just do all the motors at the same time because once you wipe your hands and clean yourself from this crap, you don't have to put it back on again. So let's just do all the motors and twist. Make sure you get those strands twisted well so they don't. Oops. Ooh, it almost hit the ground, but I cut it. So you don't uh, have little wires coming off and touching the other ESC pads. Twist that. There you go. Blue string it's stuck to my hands here. Wonderful. Get off me. There. Okay, motor three. All right, for that part, we're gonna be done, so we're gonna move the paste out of the way. Let's get our alcohol wipe. Just kind of clean everything off here because what's gonna happen is your tweezers are not gonna get a good grip. So try to wipe some of this off of the silicone area there. Leave it obviously on the strands, but just try to get it off the silicone if you can. If you can't, no big deal. But I just know that sometimes it's a little slippery for the um, stuff to hold on to. All right. With that done, put the scissors away, put the wire strippers away. There we go. Okay, so now we need to tin it, okay? So a couple ways to quickly tin this. I'm just gonna find a way to lean the wires up on a tool, like my wire cutters right here. Spread them out a little bit, like that. And then I'm going to take my soldering iron, take a piece of solder, and very quickly just cover it. Because you applied flux to it prior to, it's going to stick really well, okay? So let's get the next one, spread these out, make sure everything's twisted well, and then just lean it up, just like that. There you go. And if you need soldering supplies, just look on our page under our, our tools and gear. And under our soldering supplies, you'll find everything from the solder to the machines, to portable machines, to battery operating machines, uh, soldering pads like uh, this, this mat, soldering mat that I have that I'm working on here, the blue one, which is my favorite. Um, we have magnifying glasses like I use. The goggles you can wear for magnifying. We have the table mount with lights. Everything you need, all right? So please do not hesitate. If you need something, just look it up. And if we don't have it, please let me know what it is that you need. I'll make sure to get it for you. All right. Last motor, and then we're going to heat shrink, and we're going to be ready to solder. All right, so there's one, two, three. Make sure these look clean. Here we go. Okay. That part's done. We've got the screws we're going to move aside for right now. Okay, and what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put the heat shrink on, and I'm going to heat it up and try to get these things wrapped up. 
go. Let's see how these pan out. Remember to hold your wires still so they don't cross. Once you've got them in the heat shrink, you do not want the middle to go over and the sides to go over. So there you go. Once you do that, just press them down. Again, go over the back of this. And again, press it down to make sure they stay straight. One more on the sides here. And that's motor one. Good to go. Okay, so we'll leave that there. Start with the next motor. And do the same thing, basically. Remember, you just want to make sure the wire stays straight. Center stays in the center, left and right stay in their respective places, right here. And so basically, once you heat it up, just pass over it with your hand and press them down. Make sure they stay in their spot. And then turn it over. Put that down just a little bit, turn it over, make sure you get the other side. sides okay there you go That's the second motor Another solder out of the way do the third motor and I'm just gonna put the third and fourth one together here so I don't have to put that heat gun back down third one here All right, there we go. Now, let's get it all done in uniform. It's gonna stay like that. Hit it a little bit right there. Just kind of pass over it quickly so that you can get it to hold in place. And then once it's in place, press that down. And then flip it over and there we go. All right, so now you have it. Four motors, okay, everything the same size, everything uniform, ready to go, okay? Now what we wanna do is we're gonna cut back some of these wires and it's just gonna be a very small amount that we're gonna cut back. So let me just, it's kinda like anything else, just, and make sure when you cut them, you cut them away from the table because you don't want any of that getting into the motor area. So just cut them away. Two of these that cut short by accident, so let me just not have to fix those, I guess. There we go. I normally do this, but I don't want, if I cut it and you see it on camera, then it means it's gonna be on the table and I don't want these getting in the motor. All right, so I did cut these ones kind of short, so I'm just gonna to have to, let me just cut this. This isn't always the easiest thing to do, but let's just do it this way so I don't affect the length of the wire too much. You know, just take a little bit, there you go. And I'll pre-tin these again real quickly, but it's no big deal. There, that's not a big deal. Just go ahead and set that up. Just one. And there's two. All right, so now that they're pre-tinned and ready to go and cut to the right length, we're gonna go ahead and start fastening them on. So we'll start with the first motor. And again, we're gonna mount these uh, cross corner here. So you do, you can do top left or top right. It doesn't matter which one, but just make sure you do the opposite corner then. Okay, so I'll do top right here. Come on. Holy moly. My apologies, hold on one second. Let me get situated, there we go. All right, top right, and then we'll do bottom left. That screw's too long. I can see it coming through. So that's not the right screw. So let me grab that one. will be it. There we 
we go. Okay. Do the next one, top right, bottom left again. There we go. Let's find another screw that's the right length. I need the next set of screws. So we use the short ones. Do this one again. And finally, the last motor, top right, bottom left. I just gotta find the, there it is, the last screw that would match up here. And there we go, okay. Everything looks good. All right, now with that done, it's time to go ahead and solder these. And since we know that it's gonna come out this way, there's one of two ways you can do this, right? So let's just say um, you wanna fasten it with your zip tie first. So I'm going to find the zip ties that I will use. And I will use a, I don't normally use a blue. Oh, well, that's cool. It actually matches the motors a little bit, I guess. All right, so the deal with the zip ties is simple. When you put a zip tie on, at least what I do, I always try to go to the center, right? Not, I don't want them facing the outside. I don't want this ugly part, the locking part facing the outside. So I go to the inside. And what I'll do here is you have two ways to do this. You can either A, uh, put it on this way and pull it down, or you can go in the reverse order and bring the uh, top through. So I'm gonna go this route. Okay, and I'll show you here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go this route because I'm gonna crank this up, and there, I'm gonna leave it level just like that, okay? So make sure you do all of them the same way to keep them uniform, right? So there's one, and again, since I came from the I, I went this direction from the inside out, so I'm gonna go like that, feed it through. And again, I'm gonna leave this just shy here, just right up, about two millimeters shy of the end of the um, heat shrink, okay? And by doing that, when I go to, uh, so now this one, because I want it on the middle, I'm gonna go the other direction, from inside out, just like that. Okay, and again, I'm gonna set this up just like that. Try to keep it uniform. I'll do the next one the same. Okay. Again, I'm going to leave about two millimeters or so from the edge of the yellow there. See? And they're starting to look uniform, right? As best as they can. They keep everything in order, make it look good, right? I mean, if you care about your product, then you take the time to make it look good. And so whether you like my color choice or not, is not the point, but rather the fact that you want it to look neat and everything to be symmetrical, right? So there we go. And I usually, I usually hold myself within to about two millimeters fault tolerance. Now I'll show you what I mean in a little bit and watch now that I've said that I'm probably gonna curse myself, but you'll understand in just a second. So let me show you. Let me finish this last wire first.
Okay. So, what I was referring to is the following. Um, and I can already see that I made one error, which is right here. So we're going to take that off. Um, and it's clear that the piece went the wrong direction. So we're going to go ahead and redo this one. It did not go from the center out. Now it will. And now they'll be 100% going the same direction at least. So make sure that you try your best to keep them the same. And what I'll show you next is this. So if you turn this over, you're going to see that every piece should be identical in the way it's put in. Okay. And then for the, for the tolerance, um, I usually, and this is where I'm probably going to get myself screwed because I can already tell that there's one because the heat shrink wasn't the same size. But let's just say for the heck of it, the gap between the two is 20 millimeters here. The gap between the two is 20, uh, it's 20, yeah, about 20 millimeters there. Gap between these two is about 20, almost 21 millimeters there. And the gap between these two is the short one. So that's about 19. I said I like to keep a two millimeter uh, fault tolerance there. Um, and so for me, I used to measure it with the ruler and put them in. I've kind of chilled out on that, but still I'm almost a 20 millimeter gap all the way around just by using line of sight. And uh, I would, I would, you know, try to stay, find your comfort zone and do that because it does make a difference when you look at it and everything looks really nice and uniform. Okay. All right. So now what we do is now that these are fastened, we know that when we pull the wire, they're all going to pull the same because they're already zip tied down. So we know that these two are going to come out this way. And we know that these two are going to come around this way, right? Because we're going to go between the frame of standoff and the camera mount. So uh, what we're going to do is since we've kept all the wires in a straight row, we're going to go ahead and take our soldering iron, make sure the tip is clean, and we're going to grab the wire. And we're going to come at it using the same pattern, okay? So you're going to work uh, so that you don't cross over the wire you've already done. So for this ESC, I'm going to start, for this motor, I'm going to start right here. I'm going to lay this wire right here, and I'm just going to go ahead real quickly solder it on. There we go. Okay, now don't worry about how it's sitting right now. What we want to do is just be consistent. So we're going to do the next one, same way. I want to do the next one, the same way. What we're trying to achieve here is a uniform look. Don't worry about, like I said, don't worry about where the wires are sitting right now. Whoops. Just worry about keeping it uniform. Okay, there we go. See how they all go the same, right? So now on this one, I'm going to start a little differently, and we're going to go from this section. So let me try to keep this still, though. There we go. That's one. Let me go to the middle next. Two, and then you go to the outside. Or three. And as you can see, the pattern is, again, laid on there pretty nicely. So then we'll turn this around and go to the other side, right? So we're going to finish this up now. So get these wires out of the way and follow the same thing. For the ESC closest to you, you're going to start from the outside and go in so you don't cross over the wires that you've already completed. So again, just go straight forward. Now I need to put some, I know it's right here, I didn't tin this piece and I need to. So let me just get this wire out of the way, tin this up real quick, touch that one up. Okay, and maybe that one as well. All right, so there you go. So now let's start with the outside. Go straight in, one, Okay, and again, they're uniform. And we're going to do the same for this one. Start with the inside. I mean, the outside again, sorry. Let's do it like this. One. Two. There we go. So look at this down and try to understand that you see the pattern there. Everything's kind of out and then in, right? So come around, go out, and come straight in. And the reason we want to do that is because we know we've got a standoff going right here and in these places. So if you want to see how close you are, you can go ahead and take the standoff off from the top of the frame because these ones aren't really that critical. So we'll take that off. And we're going to go ahead and put it, put the screw right there and put the standoff. Let's see how close we go. Okay. Because we have to make enough room for this to fit, right? All right. Now, because we have a very limited amount of space here, the one thing I can already see 
is that the way this standoff sits, it puts a lot of strain on our wire right here. So unfortunately, looking at that, I'm not, that's not gonna be able to stay that way. So the outside wires are gonna have to change the way they're mounted to avoid being pushed out of the way by the standoff. And here's the standoff, and I know the standoff won't hit, shouldn't hit, but I don't like the way it's sitting because if it's really stressed on that wire, the wire's gonna break. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna actually bring this wire this direction. And I'm gonna come straight from the outside area, just like that. All right, I'm gonna correct all of these because they're all gonna to need to be done the same way. And then the standoff is gonna need a little bit of work done to it to make sure that we avoid shorting out the ESC. And I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do. It's a little small trick that will keep everything kind of safe and secure, okay? So we're gonna do this, and don't worry about how it looks right now. By the time it's done, I promise you, you'll be very happy with this quad. And you don't have to use that standoff, by the way. All right, I've tested this frame already without the standoffs there, and it's very strong. Wouldn't worry about it. But because the standoff is like that, the one thing that I do wanna do is I wanna address the issue of it being so close to the um, ESC that it could touch it, right? We don't want it to touch those pads. So we're gonna find a, um, Oh, let's see, a good sized in diameter, a good sized diameter um, heat shrink that we can put around it if we want, but still try to maintain the look. So let me see if I've got a red that might work. Um, you know what, I do have, I have something else actually. Hold on a second. Here, let me grab this. This is like my most popular color to use for, color to use for heat shrink, and so I've run out of them. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I come up about, oh, I don't know, let's say about 10 millimeters or so. Uh, actually, I'll go higher, I'll go, let's see, it's because it's gonna shrink down, so I'll go 15. Okay, so let me just go 15-ish, and I'm gonna cut that real quick, okay? Actually, I'm just gonna cut wherever it is. That should be around 15, but I think that'll be close at least. You may get three of them out of that, that's cool, I'll take that. Okay. Do you need a coffee or a snack? I got a coffee and I don't know when you want to have dinner. I was getting ready to start it. Ooh, then I'll wait for dinner. Okay. You I love apples? you. Huh? Any apples? Uh, no. Um, um, oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll take the apples. Thanks, babe. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to just heat this up, right? Oh, oops, I turned it off. Sorry. We're going to heat this up and we're going to do it to where the heat trick is like on the, on the bench. So let me just do that real quick. Holy cow, it's blowing over the place. Okay. Here we go. Okay, there's one. Hey, mama. Oh, they look good. Oh, nice. Let's see, let's see your hand. Oh, wow. This one was a little brighter than that. I, it is bright, but I like it. Yeah. Nice job, babe. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna start dinner. Thanks, mama. You're welcome. Mmm, got all the All right, now that we've got the heat shrink, we know that it's not gonna touch the ESC, uh, the metal's not gonna touch, because remember, carbon fiber is conductive, so if it touches it, it's gonna pass that through, and now we can mount that on there, and we are excellent shape, okay? So there's one. That's gonna look really good. Sorry guys, I'm very hungry, and apples are my favorite, so I have to nibble on a few of them. All right, let's do number two here. Like that. more to go.
So then the final one will be number four here. Let me get a longer screw for this one. I think that thread on that screw, yeah, it's ruined. The longer. I'm going to see if that'll work. All right, there we go. Okay, and now everything is measured and in perfect. Uh, uh, it's it's all uh, symmetrical. Okay. So what we'll do with this wire is, uh, I don't know, we'll probably just tuck it on the side here uh, and tuck this one on the side here and we can push these down. And when we're done, this thing will be actually pretty much hidden for the most part, but uh, I won't have the final until I figure out the best way to lay this out. So let me just kind of lay it like that for now. All right. And there we go. Okay. So this standoff is really, let me try something different here. This standoff is not liking me, which means I think it's the threading of the standoff that may have a problem. So let me just try a, it's about a 10 millimeter screw. That's gonna be long, but let's see if we can make that hold. It probably doesn't wanna, oops. All right, there we go. Okay, so there is our completion of uh, uh, part three, which is the motor prep for this, okay? Everything looks good. If you look from the top here uh, and you come on in from a zoomed in, you'll see that it should look very symmetrical. Uh, I believe that one thing I wanna do is I want to just make sure that these are all set up properly and they look like they are. Uh, for the most part, I do see that. I do see a little bit of gap here, but that will be taken care of once I bring these in because these wires actually need to come over the arm like that. And then that one can sit right there. And these arms will come over the wire. And then that one can sit there. Yeah, and that's starting to look uh, much better. All right, so once we do that, we're going to keep a, a, symmetric, a nice symmetrical look on this one and make it look really good. So let me... Uh, let's do this. Okay, so there you go. Uh, let me show you this here. So there it is right there, right? It's looking really good. Uh, we've got our motors done. Everything's nice and clean. Everything looks clean. The zip ties on the back. I mean, everything, you know, you, you try your best to just keep everything symmetrical, measured properly. Take your time, right? I mean, it's, it, you know, you, you take pride in your work, right? Uh, and if you don't, then you can't expect other people to. So make sure to take pride in your work and, uh, and do it right. All right, so listen, that's it for uh, part three, which is the motor. So we've done the frame, we've done the ESC and prep. Now we've done the motors and mounting. So now we're gonna go to the flight controller, okay? Uh, well, actually, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back before the flight controller. We're gonna actually put the uh, XT30 uh, on the board here uh, to make sure it's done. And then we'll put the, um, the other things going here, but I don't know if I wanna do that now or not, but uh, that'll be part four, okay? All right, guys, well, listen, if you need anything, hit me up at targetcyclonefpv.com. Again, always please, if you don't mind following us on Facebook and subscribing to us on YouTube. And uh, other than that, God bless, spend time with your family, safe flying, okay? Talk to you soon, bye.